Hey gang, welcome to Keyboard Skills Pro. My name's Tom and welcome to another How to Play Piano Lesson. This is the Allegretto in C um, by Anton Diabelli and uh, this is Opus 125 number 3 from his first 12 piano lessons collection. Um, this is a study in C and um, this piece often finds its way onto uh, piano exam boards. In fact, for 2023, 2024, it's found on the associated board, ABRSM grade one piano syllabus. We're gonna break this down into two parts. Um, we're gonna do the, the first section, the middle section, and then the last section is basically a repeat, but with some variations on the left hand. So, it is in the key of C. So let's refresh our memory of our C major scale. Always a good idea to play the C scale in um, both hands first of all. He says, trying to multitask and failing miserably. <laughs> and do some C chords and F chords and G chords. Just get us into the into the uh, the world of C major. So there we go. Okay, now. This is a really great piece, um, providing that you work on the hands apart and then put them together, it should work out pretty well. So we start with the left hand. And we're gonna be down here, not on um, um, uh, middle C, but the C below middle C. And we can see that there's a C chord right there on this uh, copy, this version of the music. Um, do be careful when you're learning pieces for exams, make sure you learn the, the one from the official exam book, because sometimes the editors make little variations on the piece, but this is just from the uh, the copy I'm using here today. So here we go with the C chord, which is C, E, G. You can see there on the music the, uh, the three um, spaces stacked together, and of course there are two C chords in the first bar. Now why is there only two? Well, because we're in two beats in the bar. Two, four. So that means every crotchet is a beat. One, two, one, two, like that little march. And um, each um, of our crotchet notes um, is one of the counts in the bar. Minims will be the whole bar. And of course, quavers will be the half note. So it goes together quite nicely, this one. So here we go. So we're going to start off by learning some chords. Now, notice here, look, we've got two chords. Look, we've got this chord, which is a C major chord. So I'd like you to memorize that first of all. And then the one next door is D, F, G. Okay, that's the second chord in this uh, arrangement. So here we go with the C chord. And then all you do is, look, you lift those fingers out of the way, change them for two and four on the D and the F. This is a G7 chord. It's called a dominant seventh, strong sounding G chord, which pushes us back to C chord. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna count through. Let's do it together. Here's the left hand. So one, two, one, two. Two, one, two, and then look, I've lifted up my fingers, look. So, so I'm going one, uh, five, three, and one for my C chord, and then I just swap those two fingers for four and two, because that's why they're there, you see. So I've got my fourth on the D, the two, the index finger on the F, and the, uh, the one on the G. So you've got to practice that change. A good idea is just to practice that. So I've lifted those fingers out of the way. Look, there you go. They're sitting there ready. we just got to learn to swap them around. Here we go. One, two. Okay, next bar we go back to C chord. And then back to the G7. And then look, we're going to go to the next uh, bar five in this arrangement. C chords. And then the top two notes move up to F and A. One, two. And then we're going to, this is the point where we need to move our hand for the first time in the left hand, because up till then, that has all been one position. So when you start off, your left hand's going to be in this five fingers low C position. So not middle C, the next C down. There we go. Here we go then. One, two. Now the top two notes there, the F and the A, I'm playing those with my index finger and my thumb. Now why am I doing that? Well, because I need to have as many fingers as possible going downstairs because the next bar look is the bottom line, that's the G. Okay, on top of that, six above. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six is E. And we're gonna play those two together. That's actually a C chord, um, most of a C chord. The C is up here in the right hand from down here, and the G is at the bottom, 
lift up, drop the bottom note down, the top note down to D, and then those two guys go together. So you're going to go ba, you do use your thumb if you wanted to, and then finish with the top two fingers on a C chord. Okay, so that's your that's your left hand through the first bit. So let's play that all the way through. One, two, one, two. G seven. C, C, G7, C, C, F major, look for that G note, E on the top, C chord this is on a G bass, G chord, and then C. Now, the crotchets, you want to make those quite light, slightly staccato, but give the G chord the full two beats. So not, not heavy. We don't want a heavy sound from the music, okay? So so keep it light, keep it nice and um, nice and gentle. It's a very, very tasteful little piece of music, sort of tea with the vicar kind of thing. Okay, so that's your left hand, folks. Now I want you to rem really memorize those two chords. So the C chord, C major in root position, and then this inverted. G7. So remember those two. So I want you to really get those two chords really well learned. Okay. Now, the melody has some articulation in it. So we want some nice separate C notes at the beginning. Notice how I'm putting my middle finger to start off with. Okay, there's the melody. Okay, it's a very distinctive melody, isn't it? Very simple melody, but sounds absolutely charming. Okay, so why are we playing those two C notes separated? Well, we're not playing them staccato per se, we're playing them detached. So I need a nice light sound there, look. And then when we do the next bottle, there's a line over the notes, that's not a tie, because the notes are different. One's a C, one's a B. So we go C, C, C into B. And you see I'm not breaking those apart. That's because they're slurred. We need to play them smoothly from the C, swapping to the B. So ba ba ba. So tap tap da. And then C C and up. Same there. Now, when you go up, look, you need to go ba 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 dum bum bum. So I'm changing my finger there. Look. Two, one, two, one, and then finger two with the C sharp up to the D, and then my fourth finger look is ready for my E's. And then we could use the fingers where they are. There we go, and look, those quavers look one and two and C, B, C. So notice how I'm articulating the, the notes there very smooth and tap, tap. Tap. So, sort of staccato, but not, not over the top staccato. It's a, a nice detached sound. So, here's the left, the right hand all the way through. One, two, one, two. There we go. Very nice sound there from the melody hand of Mr. Diabelli's. Um, lovely piece of music, very sounding very, very nice. Okay, so, so that's the first line. So we looked at the left hand there, we looked at the right hand there. Let's now show you how to put them together. Um, nice and steady, but very important that you count here. Very important that you count in, give yourself a couple of bars counting, nice and steady. And notice the changes. Look, we've got B's and D's and G's going with our G chord. And we've got C's and things and E's going with our C chord. So here we go. One, two, one, two. Okay, so that sounds rather pleasant. Now notice there when I started, one, two, you could go one, two, ready, go. One, two. Notice how I'm playing the chords and the melody in the same style, look. Swapping my fingers, look, I've learnt my two shapes. There you go, look, four, three, go. 
close up and just lift up slightly early, look. And then that shape, look, little finger on thumb, tap, tap, finish, off. Now there is a repeat at the end, so traditionally you would play that repeat if you're doing it for a grade, normally the repeats are not done on short passages, but always check the criteria, and if in doubt, ask your teacher um, to just double check that that's not a requirement of the uh, performance. Okay, so there we go, gang, so that's part one. Now, the middle section, part two, goes like this. Oh, how sweet. Now, a little change of, uh, harmony here, so now the hand is going to come all the way up to the G note. Now again, the second section has a new position, so we're going to put our little finger on G, and notice that we've got the, the, the two spaces stacked on top of each other, that's G and B. Okay, so we're going to go G and B, G and B, G and C. That then climbs to D, look, which climbs to E. So we're going to go one, two, one and two, one, two, one, and two. Now, obviously, you could do that. It's very hard, so do that, and then moving up. Let your thumb move up like that, okay? Dum, bum, ba. The next four bars, you can see then it starts the same, G and B, bum, bum, one, two, but then it stays on the G and the C, and goes back. All right, so that's that little bit. So mostly in there, it's G chords and C chords. So that's a G chord, that's a C chord, but a G on the bass. Here's a G chord, there's a C chord. Look, if I put the mini, mini missing note in, but it's all based around a G note. So it gives it this almost like a what we call a, um, um, a, a bass note, a, a pedal note, which holds through the whole thing. Dum dum ba dum bum bum ba dum 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 ba dum then go back to G. Okay, so that's that left hand section. Now the right hand here follows the same um, stylistic pattern as the right hand in the first section, but again because this has moved up, this is obviously going to go up as well. So for this bit, we're going to need to move both our hands to this kind of neck of the woods. It's what we call the G. The G note position. So it's G under middle C for the left hand, and then thumb on the G here. Now the thing is though, you want to move your fingers up a little higher, because there's no A in the melody. So I would probably put your thumb on the G, two on the B, and then filter through to E. The first note is on the fourth line, every good boy deserves, okay, and we're going to do those two short notes, okay. So here we go, um, in the middle section of Allegretto in C by Diabelli. Here we go. One, two, E, C. So again, the D's are separated. E, C. So I'm just chain, not crossing over like that. Look. Okay. D, D, E, C. And then we're going to go to B's. B, B, C, G. So it's important to make sure that the notes with the line over the top are smoothly connected one to the other, no gap in between. The individual crotchets just lightly separate them. Okay, then the next section starts again the same, because we know the left hand is the same, and of course repetition is a big thing in composing. D, D, E, C. Now, we now do need to put a finger on this A. So while I was playing that, look, I've just stretched my second finger down to A, and we're going to put an F sharp in now. We're going to go A, G, F sharp, A, G. Now there's a bit of fingering there to learn. Look, two on the A, one on the G, over to F sharp with the second finger, which neatly, look, puts the, in, the ring finger four on the A, and then three will go on there. So stretch, ta 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 t, okay. Do do do. But if you start on your thumb, look, there's a lot of unnecessary twisting. So two on the A, and you get there by just stretching down. Do 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 do. So learn that little finger pattern. Look, you could do three two if you wanted. Four's better. So it's two one two four three. 
21243. Once more, 21243. Same position, look, stretch down, da 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 da. Let's put all that together then. Okay, so we just finished down here. Da 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 dum dum bum. Now, when you finish, look, this hand's already in the right place, so you don't need to move it. Just bring this up to there. Okay, watch. Move. Time it like that. One, two, one little finger. Then you're straight in, you see. There's your G chord with the Ds. C chord, stretching up, stretching up again. So that's four bars, isn't it? Then start the same. Two comes down, look. You're still on there, keep still. Two on each one, look. One, one, and two, and... That C, look, wants to fall to there. And that's why it goes there. Okay, very nice. So that's your middle section. So you can see the benefit here of working on sections individually. Very important. So spend time on the first eight bars. Really get those chords under your belt. The middle section is the two sets of four with, a, with half of it repeating and a little variation at the end. So I would think of this piece as an A, B, A song. That means first section A, then B, which is the middle section, that's different, and then we go back to the A section. We could maybe call this A2, it's like a variation. So here's the final reprise of the theme. Okay, now that's the same as the opening, but there is a left hand pattern. And that's known in the business as Alberti Bass. I've done a video on Alberti Bass, a two minute tip. It's a special pattern um, which was made popular by, I presume the inventor of it, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Duda. Um, it was actually invented by Mr. Alberti. He put, made it very popular. It was loved by Mozart and loads of people like that. And of course, Mr. Diabelli liked it. And all it is, it's bottom, top, middle, top. It's the same chord, look. Yeah? But the difference is we're breaking the chord into four parts. The bottom note, the top note, the middle note, and the top note. And that gives us four sounds from the accompaniment instead of just two. So the first thing to do is to do this. Now why do that? Well it gets you used to playing the quaver rhythm. One and two and one and two and one, two, one, two, da, da. Because after that, da, 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 dum, 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 it's all the same. But you need to get used to this hand going at, traveling at twice the speed in, in sound as this. So the first thing to do is just spend a few minutes just playing the Alberti pattern. Bottom top, middle top, bottom top, middle top, bottom top. And you've got to get that absolutely automatic. Change your chords, look. Just get used to the chord. Changing pattern. Okay. And then as we know, it's two crotchets to every pair of quavers. So we can try and put this together straight away because it's better to learn this together because you already know the components. It's just a variation on the left hand. Here we go then. One and two and. One and two and. One and two. Now this is the only change. Instead of going to there, he goes, puts the middle note down to B. So it's the same chord, look. It's just the bass note is now a B instead of a D. So just watch out for that, because that is a difference in this copy. Here we go. One, two. Now notice the left hand is also being played very smooth. So we don't want any breaks on the left hand, but this, this hand is still going to do its articulation. So... Two on the C sharp. So that's why we put that B in, not just for a variation. Bottom, top, middle, top. Last bars. 
Okay, the ending is all the same. Okay, so practice your Alberti bass. I just do two bars at a time. One. But to start, we do this. Because it just trains your brain in the sound of the quavers. So let's play the whole piece through, talking it through as we go. Here we go. So C position down here, three on the C at the top. One, two, ready, go. Smooth, tap, tap, smooth, tap, tap, very smooth, and tap, tap, tap to G. Up, up. Okay, over, do 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 didn't, well, didn't do the correct finger in there. There we go. Da da two one two four three down. Dum bum ba da down to B with C sharp. Bum bum the ending is all the same. And I I always like to do just a slight slowdown on the last few chords. Just gives it a little sense of completion. So there you go, folks. So you'll be able to watch the various sections of that playthrough lesson. And I do sincerely hope you enjoy learning Allegretto in C by Anton Diabelli. It comes from a collection of pieces called the 12 First Piano Lessons. I've no idea why they used to call them the 12 First Piano Lessons, because that ain't what you learn on piano lesson number 12, even. Um, <laughs> but uh, it was obviously different in the old days. Um, but yeah, it's a study. It's a learning piece for students. And um, um, that's Opus 125, number 3. Um, the Allegretto or the study in C, I suppose we could also call it. So anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Do hit the subscribe button. And uh, there's loads of other uh, piano lessons here on the YouTube channel. Blues, Bergmuller, Chopin, Scott Joplin, and even lessons on how to play my music from my piano books. Because like Mr. Diabelli, I am also a composer. So if you fancy some, some new music, do head over to my website, tomhorton.co.uk. And there are three awesome piano books in a series called pianistic which are great for um, musicians who've been playing for a year or two and are looking for some fresh piano material so thanks for watching everyone hit subscribe and we'll see you soon in the next lesson thanks a lot bye bye